Thank you very much uh, indeed for attending the panel on the University Beyond the World. I really hope this will be only the beginning of a project aiming to enhance uh, and consolidate the, the um, uh, great potential of uh, universities in intervening uh, in the regional uh, development. This uh, project, university, metaphorically called uh, University Beyond the World, uh, is very dear. I have dedicated uh, his uh, many, many years, uh, really many years, because uh, 20 years ago, I started uh, a project that uh, aimed to connect the university people from the University of Bucharest, namely, to the community of a region in Transylvania, namely the Hatsek uh, uh, region. The uh, experience uh, we got uh, there ended by the creation of a UNESCO Geopark, that is a new type of protected area that really enjoy a very great uh, interest uh, throughout the world. About 200 um, geoparks uh, are now uh, established uh, in all the continents, and all of them demonstrate how the, 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 the um, intellectual can intervene uh, in uh, a sustainable development uh, of the um, uh, regions. Joining me, the uh, project continues uh, these days uh, uh, with a, a similar project in Dobroja, that uh, the Institute for Advanced uh, Studies in uh, Culture and uh, Civilization of Levant uh, develops uh, together with the University of Vidius uh, uh, of Constanza. It's a project that started four years ago, but as I said, uh, it continues successfully uh, this uh, time. Joining me today is Dr. Uh, Juana Brenda, next to me, who works uh, as an expert on sustainable development and European institution in the Levant uh, Institute. Good evening, everyone. Since uh, time is pressing us, uh, I will present uh, to introducing the attendees of uh, our panel. It's a small group, but uh, I think very devoted to this uh, subject, to this topic. Professor Emil uh, Constantinescu, president of the um, Scientific Council of the Levant Institute and former president of Romania, is a great supporter of the university intervention in regional development. He could not attend uh, uh, the panel, but he wanted very much to present a welcome address to the panel. Let's have now the, 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 the welcome address of the President Constantinescu. Thank you for the participation in this panel. This uh, invested uh, initiative uh, thank you to the University of Beyond the World. It's a creation of Professor Daniel Weiss, one of the leaders of this panel, who has gone to Extreme problems to turn it uh, into reality. What it brings me to the university is to stop uh, uh, beyond uh, its uh, high walls and impact the society it is located. This is what Professor Gimores would have started and achieved by the creation of the first uh, UNESCO Geopark and uh, the Tsar Hatsik Geopark. And uh, is now working in the Institute uh, in the project uh, she runs uh, at the Institute uh, to the witness of the Canadian civilization of the I have supported uh, the University Beyond the World's Initiative in UNESCO in 2016 uh, and in many other international fora. As I uh, strongly that it is a landmark for a better configuration of the role that the university might play in the region to take it on. 
Thank you very much, Professor Constantinescu. As I said before, we really hope uh, this will be the beginning uh, of a future uh, project uh, to develop uh, the ideas of universities uh, beyond the walls. We have uh, two key speakers from the University of Wuppertal in New Rhine uh, Westphalia. Professor Christine, Christine uh, Volkman from the UNESCO Chair of uh, Entrepreneurship and, um, and Intercultural Management, and Professor Eric Hödl, former rector of the University of Wuppertal and of the Graz University of Technology. He's also a trustee of the World Academy of Arts and uh, Science. Professor Volkman coordinates a project titled Women Entrepreneurs in Science. In this project, she works uh, also with Dr. Elena Gavrilescu from the Academy of Economic Studies in Bucharest. And uh, we are glad to have uh, her joining uh, us. From the University of Vidius of Constanza, our partner in the Dobroja project that developed this idea of universities beyond the walls participates in our meeting, Professor Mihai Gurtsu, Vice Rector of the University, and Professor Eden Mamut. Unfortunately, uh, two uh, professors who preliminary uh, announced their participation in the meeting finally announced that uh, they cannot participate due to unexpected events uh, in their institution that require uh, their presence. Uh, they are Professor Adrian uh, Uraj, General Director for the Executive Unit for Financing of the Higher Education Research Development and Education, and uh, Professor Marian Preda, Rector of the University of uh, Bucharest. Let us start uh, the meeting. And uh, before starting this, I will remind, I would like to remind you the uh, aspects that uh, our panel uh, wants to debate. These are, the slide you can put in this one. 
Are all universities prepared to respond to the third uh, mission? Does the third mission sustain the university development? And examples of cases of successful uh, implication on, of uh, universities in sustainable development uh, of the region. Hopefully, um, Professor Hödler already joined. Uh, joined us. Yes. So, Professor Hödler, welcome. Please uh, take the floor to express uh, your interest in presenting uh, some thoughts uh, on the capacity of universities in cooperating with the society based on uh, your uh, very long and stout uh, experience in managing uh, university as a rector of the Wuppertal uh, University, also of the Graz University of uh, Technology. Professor, you have the floor. I will give uh, uh, general remarks at the first uh, about the present situation of the universities. And uh, the second part will be concerned with the transformational strategies of the universities. Uh, to the first point, I uh, consider universities as a core institution to go uh, beyond the walls. And uh, this needs first a value base on human rights and democracy. And secondly, during the transition, now the sustainable society, transformational strategies have to keep in mind the values in all actions, and uh, the, especially in the everyday action which uh, a university leader has to do in this. The transformational strategy in prevailing society include also national and uh, local changes. Uh, and in this respect, we have to be aware the pre-university education is decisive for unfolding the human potentials. Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, derived from neurobiology. Uh, we know that the potentials of the younger people are depending not so much on learning, but on uh, 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 on, on not so much on teaching, but on learning. Learning is uh, a strategy to develop the potentials of humans. The university actually confronts with global sustainability in many respects, climate, social equality, gender, and so on. As the core institution, uh, the universities have to change uh, their self-understanding and especially the content of the curricula and the research uh, activities. Uh, teaching is always research driven, but above all this, the universities have to consider also their institutional structure. Uh, the university itself is also a place where human rights and uh, democracy has to uh, implement it. And we have to uh, develop less hierarchy in the university institutions in learning, uh, teaching, and also in the self-governance. Uh, to adapt the switch from teaching to learning uh, needs hybrid uh, education, less hierarchy, and uh, the use of uh, uh, the ICT technologies. This is true for the global education as well as for national and regional education. But we should uh, remind us that all over the world, there are very different accesses to the ICT technology, like in Africa or in other countries in Asia. 
If we look at the industrial countries, the switch from the economized university system, we find entrepreneurial universities, but they are until now very much captured by the economy and neglect, neglect the tremendous need of sustainability uh, on national and local level as well. According to global uh, developments, national and local questions should be in the center of the universities. So globally seen, we have a very diverse university system and the unity of all this is human rights. So uh, in some areas, uh, many universities uh, want to become like Stanford or Harvard. I think this is a misleading conception of the university development strategy because the resources are extremely different and only the unity of human rights and democracy is the anchor for both areas uh, in the, the developed and underdeveloped uh, countries. So we have to be aware that uh, the contribution of universities to the development toward the sustainable world uh, is uh, mainly depending on the uh, strategies and the radical openness toward the society. And here I will go to the second part of my intervention. Uh, all activities and strategies of the universities itself or the governing boards uh, and including also the uh, national uh, policy is uh, a radical openness toward the society and especially the civil society. I give a few examples uh, how we can keep in mind human rights and democracy uh, in the four strategy which are ex executed in many areas in the industrial countries, uh, but not so much in developing countries. So universities, first, the universities have to establish strong links with the civil society and loosen the dependence of, uh, on the state financing and the state regulation, for example, accreditation procedure, and attract much more private funding. Uh, some of the universities uh, I know quite well, they have 50% of their funds for, uh, for education and research from private resources. In Europe, especially if we have uh, the European funds for research, not so much for education because this is a national competence in Europe, but uh, we, as uh, the teaching is uh, mainly research driven, though the funding of research at the European level in the, the horizon uh, uh, Europe now, the actual uh, research program is a source to find uh, uh, funding for locally and nationally, but especially locally uh, uh, research and uh, by this uh, educational activities. The second point is uh, to create spin-offs, establishing science parks in which business, state, and civil society cooperate. And uh, in many uh, universities, we have uh, uh, science parks which are closely related to the universities. And many of the universities graduates go out and uh, have still relation to the university uh, where they come from. Uh, the third point is empowering students in developing uh, curricula 
with emphasis on facilitators instead of teachers and using IC uh, technology. So the interaction of facilitators and the students must be much stronger. And uh, there are quite a lot of uh, universities which uh, have uh, developed already steps down this uh, new kind of education. And for the establishment of learning centers for people and adults, uh, revolving education, lifelong learning uh, for all people who can enter in those uh, educational systems. This example show, shows clearly the most uh, important contribution of uh, the hum for a human society, a sustainable society, are the curricula. The curricula are the kernel for the education, and surrounding this uh, uh, curricular development goes back to the structure of and the self-understanding uh, of the universities and their governing boards. Uh, crucial is uh, interdis interdisciplinarity, including arts and deep learning by way of new modes of uh, learning processes. Not teaching, less teaching, more learning by the students themselves. Secondly, the value-based uh, learning is uh, important, as I mentioned already at the beginning. Human rights, democracy, inequality, and uh, all social problems and uh, economic problems and ecological problems, they have to be based on value, uh, uh, on values of uh, the uh, overall accepted human rights. The critically thinking and reducing the fear of unemployment is very important for the young generation and empowering students That's and reduce the distance between teachers and learners is uh, uh, at the same way crucial. What we need is creating new mindset uh, for students and the governing bodies of the universities and by this, this in, uh, changes uh, the mind of the large population. So I can finish here. And if uh, you have some questions, I can uh, uh, explain many details what concerns the strategy for, of the universities going beyond the walls. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Hedl, for such an overview on the topic. Now, I would like to give the floor to Professor Christine uh, Walkman, that holds the UNESCO Chair for Entrepreneurship and Intercultural Management of the School of Business and Economics uh, of the University of uh, Wuppertal. She has an extensive uh, experience uh, in economics and uh, business administration, holding uh, several positions in the, that regard with European Union institution on the World Economics Forum in Davos. Uh, Professor Altman, please take the floor. Yes, uh, thank you very much for this uh, kind introduction. Um, it is my pleasure to be part of uh, this uh, session. And um, with me is uh, Dr. Eliana Gavilescu. Um, I'm working since more than 15 years together with the ASE. For example, Professor Pop, uh, Adrian Tanzau, Alina Dima. So therefore, we would like to share with you some insights of our work. So sustainable developments. Um, so as an UNESCO chair, we... Uh, yeah, we all committed to the 17 sustainable development goals, as you can see here in this slide. So we do include all these SDGs in our teaching and learning processes. So my UNESCO chair was hosting the first international conference of UNESCO chairs in Wuppertal in 2019. 
you can see here there was a declaration it's called Wuppertal Declaration regarding the sustainable development through international and transdisciplinary cooperation in science and education. What is worth to mention in this context is that all international colleagues committed themselves to open their scientific work to a wider public, make the results openly available and engage more deeply with local stakeholders. So for example, in formats like citizen science. So our UNESCO chair is based on three pillars. The three pillars are education, research, and transfer. And just to give you a quick overview, I know the time is running. I would like to mention um, yeah, a few examples regarding education, research, and transfer, what we, what we are doing in Wuppertal. So one example is social entrepreneurship in uh, South Africa. So uh, master students uh, before the Corona pandemic um, yeah, uh, were uh, rising, um, the students were traveling with me and my uh, assistants to South Africa and they worked there closely with a local nonprofit organization to learn about, about the challenges in uh, the townships. So to find solutions for problems there, for local problems there, yeah. So that's one um, seminar we offer. Another important seminar in the context of sustainability and the sustainable development goals is uh, called uh, Entrepreneurial Ecosystems and Circular Economy. So we have founded, uh, or Dr. Uh, Gerhard has founded a Circular Valley. So the focus is on, on circularity in our region together with the Wuppertal Institute and uh, the CSCP. And uh, our students are working on solutions regarding the circular economy and uh, yeah, circular business models and so on. This is also a very interactive um, seminar with a, a civil society and with uh, um, companies in our region. And another uh, interesting um, seminar is uh, together with uh, the Lab of Tomorrow. It's a go governmental organization. There are projects um, in collaboration with Ghana and other countries and uh, yeah, students develop sustainable uh, solutions for the prep problems in these countries. So these are three examples regarding sustainability and the SDGs um, from our chair. And regarding research, we have several yeah, important projects um, like Horizon 2020 projects in collaboration with the University of St. Gall with uh, Cranfield University in UK. So the idea is to transfer knowledge to uh, other countries, like in this case, Lithuania, uh, to the Technical University of Kaunas, for example. So in, in the context of entrepreneurship and um, sustainability. Also, we have um, a very good and interesting project with the University of Groningen, with Oxfam um, and uh, Queen's University in, in Canada, a transatlantic uh, collaboration financed by the Federal Ministry of Education. The idea is collaboration for social innovation. And the key question is how we can scale social innovation. So these are two research examples, current research examples um, uh, we are working on. And uh, last but not least, the idea is transfer. Um, we have um, uh, one project together with our region, regional schools, um, the network of sustainable student companies, Bergisches Land bundles interdisciplinary and practice-oriented know-how and experience in sustainable student companies and serves the mutual information and networking of the most diverse actors. So it, the idea are sustainable student companies in schools, and we have a network of uh, 21 schools in the Bergische region, uh, which participate in this project. 
And last but not least, there is a project financed by our Ministry of um, um, Economy, Digitization, Innovation and Energy. Um, it's called Women Entrepreneurs in Science. And I would like to focus on this project because um, Iliana is auch one of the leaders of this project and we are very proud of this, of this project. So next slide, please. So this uh, is uh, Women Entrepreneurs in Science and what... So uh, the, uh, one quote of our minister, you can read higher education institutions play a prominent role in successful startup ecosystems worldwide and are an important source of innovative startups. Our finding aims to transfer excellent research into the market more quickly. With this finding, we are tackling the low proportion of women in the startup scene with good networks, visible role models, and a strong female startup culture. So this was the idea of our minister. And so we developed this um, project. We believe that we can realize uh, you, yourself by starting a business, we believe that anyone can found a company. So, and especially with a focus on women, yeah, we built this network of women entrepreneurs in science. Okay, so the mission, we want to create a platform for the universities of North Westphalia in order to connect women founders and women interested in founding a company. Through this, we create a positive, inspiring environment and a common drive. As a result, we want to establish a culture of trial and error in which enthusiasm and appreciation for founding is fostered. So this is a North Rhine-Westphalian wide network of uh, women entrepreneurs, more than 20 universities are now participating in this networks, in this network. And I hope, yeah, you will find this inspiring. So there you can see the universities, Cologne, Aachen, Bochum. Um, so also universities of applied sciences involved. Um, so this is a partner structure. Yeah, pa, uh, a few key figures, the, the duration until 2024. And we have 19 members and they, they you will see, uh, I think, uh, the next slide. Um, yeah, so investors, we have a lot of investors, which are also important. And um, yes, please show the ladies who are involved, Iliana. Yes, so these young ladies are involved in this project and uh, are the key players. Yes, so this is our project and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Professor Ockman. This is indeed a very interesting uh, project and uh, you raised a very interesting aspect, especially linked to this uh, women entrepreneurs in the science. Uh, it's really, it's uh, interesting and I am sure a uh, fruitful um, uh, project. We Thank wish you very you much. To great success and of course, to continue the collaboration with our Romanian colleagues that need uh, such a uh, collaboration uh, with uh, people that know very well the, the, the activities of entrepreneurship. Thank we will be much. delighted. Again. Thank you. Yeah. I will give the floor now to Professor Mihai Gertsu, the Vice Rector of uh, the University of Vidius of uh, Constanza for the research and uh, uh, innovation. And uh, I know he is also very interesting in promoting uh, the uh, students in entrepreneurship in uh, Dobrogea together with uh, colleagues from the university. Professor Gertsu, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you for uh, the kind invitation and uh, introduction. Um, as the previous um, speakers mentioned, um, uh, universities have uh, a triple mission. 
teaching, research, and uh, service to community. And um, Ovidius University makes no exception to, to this rule. Um, we try to be engaged in teaching, offering um, um, uh, study programs that uh, respond to the needs of the regional community. Uh, another way to, um, uh, to be engaged in teaching, in education, is by um, trying to include in the project-based learning approach that uh, we use, uh, in many of our programs and particularly in uh, engineering. Um, so we try to um, um, choose authentic topics for project-based learning, um, asking for such topics um, in the community, uh, both uh, the business community and uh, in partnership with the local authorities. Uh, for instance, uh, some of our uh, students do their practical work and the various projects uh, in uh, partnership with the local administration, with the city hall and with the local uh, government. Um, so um, it's not just engineering, but also social sciences. Uh, also, lifelong learning um, is a way to, uh, to engage with the society and one example that we can give is a project that was about um, uh, 2.3 million euros financed from uh, European funds. It was called From Idea to Entrepreneurship and we uh, trained um, a few hundred students in entrepreneurship and out of those, uh, 39 um, started successful businesses that were um, supported with uh, those uh, structural funds. In terms of research, uh, we try to um, start um, uh, common projects with the local businesses. And uh, we have a, a technology transfer office uh, in the university that um, applied for four such uh, uh, projects uh, financed, uh, which would be financed with um, a regional um, uh, European funds. Um, they focus on uh, digitalization of um, uh, these firms and uh, they range uh, from uh, um, agriculture to uh, um, businesses that are involved in education. Uh, along with the uh, uh, TTO that we have uh, within the um, um, Institute for Nanotechnologies and um, uh, advanced uh, energy sources. Uh, there is um, a group that is also involved with technology transfer. The group is run by Professor Mahmoud, who uh, will probably talk about that uh, later on. Um, in terms of service, um, one um, uh, approach that Ovidius University has is along the uh, line um, uh, already mentioned by Professor Hurdle um, in terms of uh, promoting uh, values of uh, democracy, human rights, and also fighting disinformation and uh, fake news. So some of our colleagues that are in um, uh, journalism and uh, humanities, social sciences, um, are very active um, in the local media trying to promote um, uh, critical thinking and uh, uh, fight against uh, disinformation. Uh, we also, uh, they also participate in public debates and um, other colleagues of ours, uh, particularly those in um, uh, in the business school, uh, do research for uh, um, uh, policy recommendations for uh, the public authorities. Uh, also, um, uh, people in the business school and in uh, social assistance are involved with the uh, local 
NGOs trying to support social entrepreneurship and the well-being of the communities. Um, two examples that I can uh, give here are uh, um, in terms of um, uh, engagement and service to the community um, are um, the Mars Plan uh, project in which uh, our uh, colleagues are very uh, involved in together with local stakeholders and uh, also national authorities uh, in preparing a maritime spatial plan for uh, the Black Sea uh, through a cross-border cooperation project uh, with Bulgarian partners. Uh, and um, I would also like to mention the a project that Professor Grigorescu already mentioned, um, Ovidius University is um, um, uh, trying to uh, uh, bring to uh, the attention of uh, the public and also to the research community, uh, the um, uh, traditions, culture, also uh, the resources available uh, in terms of um, uh, economic development, uh, tourism interests, um, also uh, um, uh, geologic, geographic uh, topics of interest for Dobroja. And uh, we're very happy to collaborate with uh, the Levant Institute uh, on, uh, on these projects. Uh, finally, I would like to mention here that we have a digital innovation hub that was recognized at the national level. And in February, we plan to um, apply for uh, this uh, hub to be recognized and funded at European level as a European uh, digital innovation hub. Um, and the last point I would like to make is um, uh, related to obstacles. Uh, universities uh, throughout the world in Europe and particularly in Eastern Europe and Romania face obstacles in, when it comes to engaging, um, um, as I mentioned, in teaching research and with the community. And one uh, problem that we face is related to poor motivation of academics. Uh, in Romania, in particular, uh, at national level, the criteria for promotion uh, are very focused on research and particularly on uh, uh, academic uh, papers published in uh, research journals. And um, uh, the promotion um, and such criteria don't uh, stimulate our academics to uh, uh, get out of, um, uh, of the ivory tower and uh, work with the communities. So uh, right now only the true enthusiasts are doing this and we hope that uh, a change of policy at national level um, would um, uh, lead to an increase of number of uh, academics involved. And uh, the last point, um, another obstacle is the infrastructure. Uh, Romanian universities in particular and uh, the ones in uh, a southeastern region don't have enough money from education to uh, invest in infrastructure. And the local businesses, the local entrepreneurs are asking for uh, laboratories where they can test before investing. So we hope that uh, with the uh, national plan for uh, um, resilience and uh, uh, reconstruction or whatever that name is, um, uh, we hope that through such plans, uh, a statewide um, a network of such uh, uh, testing uh, infrastructures uh, would be built and we, are very, we would be very happy to, uh, to um, host such uh, infrastructure. Uh, thank you for your attention and thank you for um, proposing such a generous theme for this debate. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Gertrude. Thank you especially for your very realistic uh, approach uh, to the project. 
showing not only the successful stories, but also the barriers uh, that uh, are in front. And of course, for the efforts uh, you put to, to overpass uh, them. We wish you success and uh, sincerely, we hope we will continue to collaborate uh, in this uh, Dobroja project. Thank you very much. Last but not least, Professor Eden Mahmoud, uh, who teaches engineering thermodynamics and uh, advanced energy system in the Ovidius University in Constanza. He is also Secretary General of the Black Sea University Network, and he has a great experience in sustainable development. He works uh, in a, a government uh, team for sustainable development of the region, and of course, uh, she uh, he uh, has many things to to show please professor mamut uh, take the floor thank you thank you very much uh, with your permission i would like also to share some slides so uh, i don't know if you can see now the yes we can yes yes we can yeah so uh, once again, thank you for the invitation and for the very pleasant, uh, let's say, uh, frame and environment that you organize for such debates. Uh, and um, yes, uh, from, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the university point of view, the topic of getting out of the walls, it is a subject that uh, uh, triggered many different movements uh, in the academic uh, communities. So uh, from that uh, perspective, I would like to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, continue the discussion uh, that the distinguished uh, panelists uh, have uh, already introduced uh, with a new perspective of a regional approach. The Black Sea Universities Network is a network covering uh, 12 countries the countries that are members of the Black Sea Economic Cooperation. And uh, at present, there are 120 universities uh, uh, that are active within this, uh, this uh, framework. So uh, the first question that was put uh, regarding uh, the preparedness of the universities for the third mission, of course, uh, we have to say that uh, there are many universities that are prepared, but there are also many universities that are not prepared for this third mission. Uh, and uh, when I say that, uh, of course, we have to look to this, uh, let's say, uh, evolutionary perspective, because the university today uh, became based on uh, different types of achievements over the centuries where um, they were experienced and they were developed uh, different type of, uh, let's say, approaches orienting mostly to, towards education mission, orienting then towards uh, research and to integrate research with education. And of course, then further going towards uh, entrepreneurship and to have all these uh, parts, uh, uh, let's say, in a symbiotic way um, and uh, generating uh, uh, synergies. So there are two aspects that have to be taken into consideration when we discuss about, uh, let's say, the preparedness of universities for this uh, third mission. There are many times confusions that, um, of course, uh, there are some projects, smaller or larger, where the universities are involved, sometimes only like some persons or some uh, groups or some students. But uh, those are projects that are starting and uh, ending. Uh, generally speaking, they have a very important uh, role in uh, generating or achieving a different type of impact but there is also the other aspect that is the structural preparedness of the university, where the university has to have, uh, let's say, specialized functions and a very professional approach to address them. So generally, we, we are speaking about this triangle of uh, the role of universities and uh, usually we uh, define uh, the, the innovation uh, 
edge as uh, the um, contribution to the society and to have this service to the, to the society. But of course, in order to develop this, the university has to have a very, very performant type of management because it is a very complex process where there are a mixing of different types of uh, procedures, of, uh, of activities, and of course, requiring many resources. Usually speaking, uh, when we are talking about the third mission, we refer to the, let's call it a little bit classical knowledge transfer, uh, let's say, uh, approach of the university, where we have different formal type of activities interacting and uh, collaborating with the, with the communities. And of course, besides of that, there are some informal type of channels for doing this. But on the other side, we have to mention also the uh, evolution of the, of the uh, developments and, and the discoveries and achievements from starting from a basic idea in, uh, uh, in the laboratory, uh, then uh, going further to a proof of concept and the prototype. But uh, further on, for the universities, generally, it is uh, an area where they are, uh, uh, let's say, not prepared to go further. And uh, usually it's called the valley of death because many projects that are fantastic research activities are stopping at the level of, of the prototype. And there is not a structural preparedness of the university to go further and to have partnerships with business angels, with venture capitals, with large corporations. So uh, from that perspective, I would like to uh, give you just some examples. Uh, for instance, uh, in the network, uh, the University of Bucharest uh, is one of the, let's say, uh, uh, leading, uh, leading uh, universities and uh, with a very long tradition. So uh, in this uh, university, there is a research center, the so-called Free Nano SAE Center under the Faculty of Physics, where there is a very important competence on uh, electrochemistry, fuel cell development, and so on. So in order to bridge these, uh, uh, let's say, achievements in uh, research activities, it has been developed a special partnership with Renault Technology Rumani, uh, the, uh, let's say, techno center of Reno, which is located in, uh, in uh, Romania. And based on that, the advanced, uh, let's say, knowledge that was achieved in the university has been further bridged with the expertise existing in Reno for uh, developing powertrains, integrating fuel cells in hybrid electric uh, powertrains. But also what is extremely important is that uh, the whole um, uh, partnership with uh, Renault uh, led to uh, many different uh, interaction with different other faculties within the university in order to discuss and to reconsider, let's say, the future of the car and the future of uh, mobility in the coming uh, period. The next uh, experience uh, that I would like to share is uh, the partnership that we, as the Black Sea Universities Network, the Secretariat is located in Constanza and is hosted by the Ovidius University of Constanza. Actually, the Black Sea University Network has been uh, created uh, on the premises of, of the Ovidius University and uh, we have a very nice uh, collaboration uh, during the years. So the Black Sea Universities Network uh, uh, partnered with the County Council of Constanza in order to address extremely important opportunities for positioning the region of Constanza in the future strategies that are uh, connected to the future of Europe. So the potential of Constanza is very high and is located along the Danube uh, River, is actually 
uh, connecting the, the sea uh, transport with the, with the Danube. We have also a uh, uh, Danube uh, Black Sea Canal. And uh, the partnership uh, between BSUM and uh, the Company Council was dedicated to develop and promote the strategy for a Danube Green Corridor. Yes. Is there something? No, 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 it's fine. Okay. Yes, it's fine. So uh, yes. in that perspective, as I was saying, the university resources from different universities from the network, uh, partnering with the County Council, is now uh, suggesting and proposing different approaches for addressing different calls within the EU uh, under this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Green Deal uh, approach. And uh, of course, in this process, it was also uh, the need for uh, having a special setup, a special, uh, let's say, collaborating uh, um, area or environment. We call it uh, the leading laboratory. Uh, the name is uh, Dobroja Blue Bay. Is covering the region between Constanza and uh, Chernavoda, the two parts of Dobroja that was mentioned already, connecting the Danube and, and the Black Sea. So here uh, it is intended to the development of a package of innovation actions dedicated to a holistic approach for water management, for sustainable energy, for transport and hydrogen-based regional developments. So I gave here just uh, two examples from Romania addressing uh, the problem of the third mission from two different perspectives, from the perspective of a university partnering with a large corporation and from the perspective of the network, uh, let's say clustering the resources from different universities partnering with the local authority in order to develop the specific dedicated strategies and plans. But examples like this are many within this uh, Black Sea region. For instance, we have uh, a special strategy that was initiated about 10 years ago in Turkey in order to involve the universities in the social innovation and community innovation and there are outstanding examples that, uh, that can be offered as uh, success stories where uh, the very uh, valuable universities uh, have uh, succeeded to develop different uh, type of solutions. There are also very nice examples in Bulgaria, in Ukraine or in Georgia, where we can see this, uh, this process of, uh, of collaborating. And based on that, we can say that, of course, there is a huge uh, diversity of and possibilities to contribute to the society by providing extremely uh, high added value services. Of course, there is another aspect that has to be mentioned and, uh, and we have to pinpoint on that, that the collaboration and cooperation between the universities and communities is a factor that is adding value to the scientific research and education activities of or inside that university. So it is a synergic process that is triggering many uh, different, uh, let's say, potential uh, developments inside the university. But in that respect, it is important that from one side, the university management has to address ambitious challenges and to involve the best of their scholars, researchers and students in this kind of, uh, let's say, uh, ambitious projects and, and plans. So coming back to your uh, questions, I do consider that uh, at present, uh, this uh, debate that is not only within this uh, uh, conference, but uh, within this panel, but also uh, it is a debate that is uh, now uh, a hot topic all around Europe and uh, in uh, many different regions within the, the uh, or around the world. It is a subject that uh, could generate some new and uh, innovative approaches. And I am sure that uh, by this kind of debates, it will be an excellent opportunity to learn 
from uh, the experiences that already have been presented, like uh, the ones from Germany and uh, from different other parts of the world. Thank you for your attention. We increase very much the, the, the problems uh, that university have to face. Uh, unfortunately, the time is so short, so we have to conclude, not before, thinking that uh, we have the possibility to meet face-to-face, uh, -to, -face, to debate uh, in details uh, this aspect, because indeed the universities have a great potential. There are great uh, barriers uh, in developing the third missions. Uh, not uh, all universities uh, are prepared to do this, but uh, really the regions need the intervention the, of this uh, intellectual property that is uh, held uh, in the university, the diversity of specialities. So really we hope uh, this is just uh, a very short beginning uh, of, of a, a future project. Thank you very much indeed, and hope to see you, as I said, uh, face to face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank and you. Uh, we will provide the link because the session has been recorded. It was live on YouTube for the moment. And we will provide further the links so you can access it later and you know, disseminate it uh, further to uh, friends and partners. Thank you again for the participation.